Welcome back to the Tier 1 Lab series where we talk about real tools used in sysadmin and help desk jobs. In the last episode, we set up a Windows Server VM in Azure and we installed all of the roles and features that we're going to need for this lab. This includes Active Directory, which we're going to talk about today. I want to give an important caveat now. If you're coming from that previous episode, when you're done with your lab for the day, make sure that you delete that resource group. Delete everything that you created in order to save yourself money. If you don't, I was slightly off the mark for the price. If you just deallocate, it's going to cost you like three eighty a day, three dollars and eighty cents a day, which is too much money in my opinion. Anytime you need to spin up a lab, just spin one up. Once you're done, delete everything. Okay, so today we're going to work on promoting that server that we made to a domain controller. We'll make sure everything works, and then after this, we'll play around a little bit in Active Directory, make some users, make some groups, maybe reset a password or two. And before we jump in, I want to discuss what a domain controller actually is. A domain controller is the main controller of your domain. It's going to control things like logins, permissions, and then security across all users and computers in the network. Think of it as a boss of your digital office. If you have no domain controller, you have no central control. Our domain controller is the heart of Active Directory. Let's get back to Azure and get into it. So again, before we start, because this is very, very, very important, I want you to remember, you can delete your resource group, that'll delete all of the resources that you created yesterday so you're not paying for them while you're not using them. Also an important Azure tool, and this is not an Azure lab, is this cost analysis. I can just search it up here at the top of Azure. I can type in cost analysis and I can click on daily costs and accumulated costs. So if we see my daily costs are somewhere around $3.00. Mine are going to be a little bit higher because I'm spinning up other VMs to practice for these YouTube videos that I'm making. But I can also change my filter, change it back to July, and see everything that I'm paying for these VMs that I'm spinning up. I left my VM on last night, came on today, and realized that this was costing a little bit more than I expected it to cost. That's why I'm being so liberal about telling you guys, make sure that you delete the VMs and all the resources at the end of your labbing. Okay, so let's go to our VM. Go to Lab VM. I'm going to connect, and I'm going to connect via Bastion, just like we did yesterday. I'm going to put in my username and my password, and I'm going to go ahead down here, and I'm going to click Connect. Again, you have to have pop-ups open, so it actually opens this Bastion window in another window. If you don't, it's just not going to open up. Another important thing that I didn't think about is I turned my VM off last night. You need to turn your VM back on, so click Start before you click Connect. That was silly. I've been here for like five minutes looking at this, like, why is my Bastion not working? My VM is not turned on. Okay, so now we go connect via Bastion again. I put in my username and password, and we should be good to go. Okay, so in our last episode, we clicked that setting that says don't open server manager automatically. That means I have to manually open server manager. Here we go. And when I open my server manager, it's going to take a wee bit to populate all of these roles and server groups. Okay. Now that we're populated, I'm going to go ahead and click ADDS. Up here at the top, it says configuration required for Active Directory domain services at lab VM. I'm going to click more. In this more section, I have this post deployment configuration, and I have this action, promote this server to a domain controller. I'm going to click on that. And for this part, I'm going to go ahead and click add a new forest, because we're going to make our own, and our root domain name is going to be lab.local. Next. Okay, for my DSRM password, I'm just going to use the same password. That's probably not good security, but I don't really care because I'm going to delete this VM and all of this lab once I'm done with this. And what this does is not important to a T1. Next. Okay, and through all of these screens, I'm just going to be nexting along. They may take a little bit to load. Just continue nexting. All right, and once you get to this prerequisites screen, I'm going to go ahead and click install once it loads. It says, if you click install, the server automatically reboots at the end of the promotion operation. So here we are going to get a reboot. Let's install. Now this is going to take a couple minutes, but once it's back up and back to life, we will have a domain. While we wait, I want to take this caveat once again to say thank you guys for being here. This lab is meant to help people who are wanting to get into IT or who are in IT and not getting the exposure that they want to get. I'm thankful I work at an MSP, so I get so much exposure to things like Windows Server, GPO, stuff like that. But for a lot of people, labbing is the best way that they can actually do that. I think Azure is the cheapest and easiest way. It, it might not be the cheapest, but it's the easiest way to do these labs. You don't have to host anything at home. In this series, we're going to cover a bunch of different stuff like DHCP, DNS, GPO, print management, all things that you're going to be using on your actual IT jobs. Again, appreciate you guys being here and appreciate all the support so far. Let's get back into it. Okay, so again, this screen is going to pop up. It's going to say connection error. The Bastion host has closed the connection because there's been no response. That's totally fine. I'm just going to close out of this. Go back to my Azure, and I'm just going to type in my password again. And I'll just go ahead and reconnect here. This process of the server promoting to a DC actually will take a little bit of time. So it may come up and just have this spinning screen. Please wait for the group policy client. 
Okay, so now that that's done and we're able to actually log back in, we are good to go into Active Directory. I'm gonna type in Active Directory and you're gonna see a bunch of stuff comes up. All of this stuff. The most common Active Directory that we're gonna use is actually not the first one that comes up. It's Active Directory Users and Computers, something we call ADUC. We have ADUC and we have ADAC. ADAC is used, just not as commonly. So let's go ahead and click on ADUC and I'll expand this out and see if I can make my screen a little bit bigger. Okay, I guess we're gonna stay kind of small. So up here I have my forest lab.local. This is just what we see and what we use in actual IT. You see there's a bunch of folders that are automatically created. Folders in Active Directory are called OUs for organizational units. Understand, Active Directory is just a directory. It's just a big folder system with a bunch of subfolders and things we call objects. The weird thing about Active Directory is that people are objects, users are objects, computers are objects. Things like security groups are also objects. So I'm gonna show you something that we really see super common. I'm gonna go up here, right click on my lab.local, and I'm gonna click new organizational unit. Let's create an organizational unit for our organization called branch one, okay. Within branch one, I'm gonna right click on it, I'm gonna click new, I'm gonna make another organizational unit, and I'm gonna call it users. I'll also make one, and I'll call it computers. Organizational unit, and then let's make one more in there, and let's just call it groups. Let's say that I wanna make my first user at branch one. I can right click on users, I can click new, I can click user, and I can create my user. I'm gonna go ahead and call this guy Jake is cool. And at this organization, we're gonna do first name dot last name. So it's gonna be Jake dot is cool at lab dot local. That's gonna be my user. Upon my next screen, I can set up user must change password at next logon and we'll make him a password. Go ahead and click next and finish. And I can see if I go to my users group, my users OU, I can see this user, Jake is cool. If I double click on him, I've got a bunch of stuff that I can see with regard to his Active Directory profile. And so this is just our test user. In the next video, we'll discuss organizing users and groups like we would in the real world. But I also want you to notice one thing. There's a default folder here called computers. When you notice how there's nothing in it, that's because our domain controller is our only computer that's on this network. When I actually domain join a device, when I add a computer to this domain, it's gonna pop up here in this OU. I'm not creating computers in this OU. I'm letting them be automatically created when I domain join my PCs. Notice how I made a separate computers folder over here under branch one. There's a reason I did that. It's maybe a complex reason for somebody who's just starting, but most organizations that you have are gonna be what we call hybrid organizations. So you're gonna have your on-premises Active Directory domain controller. You're also gonna have Microsoft integrated. And in order for certain things to work, like conditional access, which I've spoken about in past videos, you're gonna to have to move your computers to a proper OU, what we call a syncing OU, so that this computer not only is domain joined, but it becomes what we call hybrid joined. So it gets joined in the cloud as well. It gets joined in Microsoft. So normally when I domain join a computer, I would grab it out of this OU and I would move it to this computer's OU. That's why I made that separate OU. And then notice we also have a groups OU. Again, in our next episode, we'll make a bunch of groups, we'll make a bunch of users, and we'll kind of show how we organize groups and users. Okay, today we've actually taken our Windows Server instance and we've promoted it to a domain controller. We have a users folder, we have a computers folder, we have a groups folder, we can see our domain lab.local. Very important if you don't want to pay lots of money for these labs. Go ahead and close out of this screen, go back to Azure. Up at the top here, you should be able to search your recently visited resources and you can see your resource group Lab test one was what I named it in the past episode. Go ahead and click on that. You're gonna delete this resource group. Is this a pain? It kind of is a pain because you're gonna to have to recreate the VM and promote it to a domain controller again the next time you hop in. So my recommendation for you is make a domain controller, play around for as long as you want to play around, and then deallocate it. Making new resources is actually gonna be useful for you as well because you're gonna be able to say you have a little bit of Azure experience spinning up VMs and doing things like that. You'll get to a point where you're pretty good at it and you're pretty fast at it. It might take you 15, 20 minutes just because Azure takes some time for these things. But if you completely delete the resource group at the end of every time you're doing your lab, you're gonna save a lot of money. We'll just go ahead and apply a force delete. We'll type in our resource group name, which is rg-labtest-1, and I can see that it's gonna delete all of these dependent resources, labvm, all of this stuff, the bastion and everything, and I'll go ahead and delete it. I'm not gonna delete it now because I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna make more episodes of this. But again, for you saving money, once you delete everything, you're no longer paying for it. It's gonna be a lot cheaper for you. I'm talking like a dollar or less a day, unless you're labbing for hours and hours on end. But don't forget to leave this on. If you leave your VM on, you're gonna be paying money for it for as long as it's on. 
I just wanted to make this last caveat because I forgot to tell you guys in the last video until after I actually said goodbye. So now I'm saying goodbye. Thank you for being here today. Again, in the next episode, we'll discuss computers, groups, users, domain joining, and we'll go from there. Appreciate you guys. Have a great day. Be safe. Be smart. Make some good decisions. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and good luck with those Active Directory Labs.